we've assembled the bottom half of the engine and we've decided to put it in the car with just the bottom half of the engine and then put the barrels on when the engine's in the car because putting, we have to put the flywheel on as we're putting the engine in the car so that's what we're going to do so this is the next step is to get it in the car and um, and that's it really the only problems we've had taking it to pieces we found the problem with the clutch which we'd already talked about and um, and that's it really the clutch and there wasn't much else wrong with it really I must say when we drain the oil out it looked very black so I think we're gonna have to probably do that a bit more often than what we've done it so far but anyway so the next bit is really getting the engine in the car when they originally made these engines, they obviously had a rubber grommet or a bit of rubber that went there. So that when the pistons go, when the cylinders go in, they touch one another like that. You put a clip round and the water goes through there. Well, obviously we haven't got those. So when we first put this engine together, I, myself, without anybody, <laughs> decided to do it like this. And I can't remember what I did. And it was only a little while ago, but anyway, there you are. And so now we're going to try and redo it and what we do, we fill it up with tiger seal and then we flush it off and then when we put it together we put a little bit of tiger seal on, put the barrel on and then you put the clip on and they never leaked at all, they were absolutely beautiful. But how I actually did it I can't bloody remember but anyway we're having a go. You leave them till tomorrow and then you turn it over and do the other side and as I say, we can't put the barrels on until we've done it. And we're going to put that on the bottom of the barrels as well. Well, what I'm saying is, is that that has got wear, and that is the side that rubs on there. So that has been doing all the work. And then when you look at the other side, which goes up to the flywheel, it doesn't look like it's ever done anything. But if that's not actually touching the flywheel, what's holding it off the flywheel? We've looked at everything. There's no marks anywhere. It's all lovely. So there's no reason why that shouldn't go way down onto there. Why is it not why is it not using the flower side? It's using the clap side but not the flower side. You know, I mean it's, that's that's sort of normal. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, is it? Mm. We've even got a little bit of slack. Because we made that. We made that and we made that. We didn't make that, that's Bentley. But we made that bit. I'm just making sure that it's absolutely clean in there. I'm not taking any metal out because it's impossible. But, you know, the dirt. I think what happened was it was slowly drying up when we were driving it and it was obviously sticking more and more so the clutch was feeling not so nice as what it did before. But I think a little bit of clearance which we've just put on it plus getting everything nice and clean plus we're going to check to make sure that the engine is line with the gearbox and I think this will work much nicer. And that wasn't terrible. So you put that in, so when that, that just pushes that solid, so that's going to be sticking out square with the gearbox. And then, see what I mean? Mm. Because it looks so much more, which I hope 
Sometimes you can kill us. Are we good? Yeah, of course. Down a bit or back a bit? Or, uh, we can come forward a bit more and let it down. built the original car, we took the flywheel off the old van out there and we took the gearbox out we cut the front of the gearbox, that shaft off, and then we had a bit of a Bentley and we cut that off and then we joined it together with a sleeve and so we sold it. We didn't think it would last, we just did it to sort of get a complete thing so that we could take it to somebody and say that's what we want. Anyway, I drove the car for a year on this and it never let us down. When we decided we wanted to fix all the things that we bodged up just to get it going, we decided to make a new one of those. So we turned the blank up, I think, out of EN36, and we took it to our firm and they put the splines and, the, and that on it for us. So that was all done by somebody else. And, um, and it worked fine until we took it to bits this time and we noticed the clutch wasn't working properly because I reckon the clutch is sticking on there and then as the clutch goes in, it doesn't never stick on the flywheel, never sort of works on the flywheel. So one side it was like brand new, the other side you could see it had a lot of use. So we just tried that in the clutch and it has got a fraction more clearance. And it doesn't seem to be sticking on the root, it seems to be sticking on the outside. So we've now decided that we went and got this out of the shed, measured it, and it's a actually fractionally bigger. So we thought, well, just to be absolutely confident, we'll make it exactly the same size as this. Because that is from the original Mercedes. The clutch is from the original Mercedes. So if we stick to that, we shouldn't be far off. But I think cleaning it all up and everything is going to make a difference. And obviously from now on, I shall get in there with the old squirt of oil and stick it on that in a regular time. You know, so that we've always got a no, that it's going to slide on there rather than get stuck. Because when we first put it together, the clutch seemed to work well. But towards the end, and one of the reasons I took it to bits, I could feel the clutch was not as good as it used to be. And I think it was sticking on there more because it had got dry. So anyway, we cleaned it all up. And we're going to take, I don't know, five thou, I think it is, or something. It's something stupid. We're only doing it to be sure that it's the same as this one. Well, that was amazing how that lasted with a bit of silver solder. They were going, when we made the two-cylinder mini, they were, they were like, that won't work, that crank will last two seconds, you know. I mean, that, when you've got a 10-litre engine, that must have been under a load of strain. But mind you, the back wheels were only narrow, so it had to spin the wheels before it got too uh, carried away, but it never gave any trouble. Well, it's the old story. We're making something do I think we can what it ain't supposed to do. Yeah. I'd be surprised if we haven't improved that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that always seems to work nicer when you've got that. Right? And and much of, you know, if it slipped, just slip the clutch for ten seconds and that'll be gone. That's what it needed, really. It needed that, a squirt of that, 
and you sink the clutches in speedway. And this bloke that I knew called, um, oh, what's his name? Anyway, he is the man who registered the name Jack and made Jack engines, Alex Card. Mm. He said the bloke used to come in and pull the clutch out and he'd squirt it in there and I went, fuck it, I can't do that, the clutch is there. He said within a week or two, they were all doing mm. it. Because it just gives you that nice lot off the line, you know? Yeah. Instead of that real jolt. Come into, yeah. Let's go over them. I'll let it down, keep it on, mate, Josh. <laughs> Split pin goes in there, so it's inside the gudging pin. Who's taken better? Yeah, it's got damage somehow. I don't know. I think over the way the I think it had a little burr on there. Mm. Oh, we've pulled it through. Yeah, down that hole. Why did you turn it over? In, the, in this little thing that holds the gadget pin from coming in and out and the split pin goes through and then you have to go through there to bend the split pin. That's it. Can you see, look, if you ain't got that in enough, that, that rub on the ball. Oh, yeah. Mm, well, it's so thin on that edge because it's, what it's, it's doing, it's cutting the oil as it comes yeah. down the ball. It cuts through the oil, you know. When we first put the car together, I went to Montalieri and everybody was moaning because it was smoking so bad it was nearly choking everybody. So when we came back, we took it to bits and it had a ring on there, which was the oil ring. And, um, and anyway, we took the pistons out and had a look at them and they didn't have this. Most modern pistons look like this, so we just copied a modern piston. We made a fixture and put that ring in the fixture and machined that groove on it. And then we machined that groove in the piston and drilled those, what's that, five holes? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we drilled those five holes. And then what happens is, as the piston goes down the ball, it gets caught by that and sends it all inside the piston. Anyway, it completely stops it smoking. Because, you know, I was thinking, oh, we're going to have to sort piston rings out. Well, you're never going to get piston rings like that. But even we left that ring off, did that, and it didn't smoke. And it don't smoke now. So, you know. But I think the next time we take this to bits, if we ever do, it's going to be some new pistons with modern rings, little narrow rings, you know. But um, it works so good, it's, a, it's hardly worth the bother. Being an aeroplane engine, obviously it has to be light. And when you look at it, all the castings are dead thin. Whereas normally you have a great lump up here which would bolt the cylinder block down. But this engine, these studs go all the way through and bolt to the bottom of the engine for holding the main caps on. So that comes all the way through. It's got a little piece on here to stop it falling right the way through. And then you put the barrels on. So what it meant is that all of this and everywhere can be really light and dead thin. And it doesn't, you know, I mean, it, would have, it would have been nice to weigh the engine if we could have done, but it would have been a bit difficult. But, you know, when you get an MGB on that hoist, this doesn't feel any worse. We've got this piston ring tool. 
which we've never used, because every time we ever come to use it, it's never got the size of one that we want. So obviously we haven't got one for a five and a half inch piston, so we've cut that in half, and we're just going to put a lump of metal in it and see whether it'll work to drop the barrels on. Because the piston rings, I don't know how we did it last time, but they take a lot of squeezing because they're literally, you know, they're like that thick and just a big lump of metal, really. We can finish it off after. We're just getting that roughly to width. We trim it up after. Well, no, you bend it with, well, yeah. Still, one good thing, John, in the future, I'll be able to, we can't remember how we did it. We'll be able to look at the... Look um, at the video. Because <laughs> we, we've obviously done this before, but we've forgotten about it. Don't tell me that's five and a half inches, is it? Not far off. Isn't that amazing? some on the skirt of the barrel. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. So as you push yeah. it down. Because to be honest, as long as it's in there on the edge around the edge, if it rubs a bit, it, it won't wear it away, will it? On the no. Floor? Not in no. any time soon. I think it wore the gasket away. Push the gasket out and yeah. it'll come loose. Yeah. So I think if we could get it sort of around there like that, yeah. as we push that down, it'll just it'll go on the whole thing, won't it? Plug that. Tiger seal, you can't beat it. We should make a car out of tiger seal. Yeah. Somebody mentioned lightening the flywheel. And I've noticed with old cars, and especially quite low powered cars, in the day had quite heavy flywheels. And if you think about it, this crankshaft's got no counterbalance. It's like a piece of bent wire. Now, when you let the clutch out and the transmission or whatever comes flying from the back axle up to the engine, having that nice big heavy flywheel to act as a sort of damper before it actually hits the crankshaft is a good thing. And I, I, I understand what you're saying, and it is a standard procedure. But in this particular case, with these early engines, with bent wire crankshafts, I think having a heavy flywheel is a very good protection in avoiding sudden shocks to the crankshaft and breaking it. So that's why we didn't have a very light flywheel. I did think about it, but you know, I've had quite a lot of experience now. I mean, you look at the Sarps and it's a little tiny car, it's got bloody weight flywheel, and I'm convinced. And even a baby Peugeot, which is a little tiny engine, Still got quite a heavy flywheel, so I think there's a bit of cleverness in there that um, you know is worth keeping. I'm going to have 
full flux on that side and full flux on this side, which is how it should be. But thinking I'm a lot cleverer than I am, I put all the plugs on the exhaust side, which is normal with modern cars, they always put the plug near the exhaust. But I'm going to try it now, as it would be originally, one plug one side and one plug the other side. The last one, and it's as tight as tight, and we've cleaned it up and we've looked at it, so now we've decided to make a proper screwdriver that will go down inside there with a great big fat thing so we can screw it in. I, don't, I hate to keep on about Tiger Seal, but um, these things here, which we showed you how we built them up, now we've got them on, put a smear and then bolt them down. As you can see, look, that's just like a lovely solid rubber grommet, really. And then that has a clip round it. Well, we don't really need a clip round it, but we've got these nice original clips that we'll put them around it anyway, because it's part of the car. But, um, you know, I think that's a great success. Around the bottom of the barrels. So we'll see whether that does any good. Yeah, should be right. Yeah, 1342 or wherever it is. So yeah. 1432, yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to find number one on the cap to set the rotor arm up. Oh, yeah, to do this lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what, you got it up on number one, yeah? Uh, yeah, number one compression. Yeah. And we're just going to see what actually we can use. Yeah, so you only got to get one. Uh, yeah. Either one of them will do it. Yeah, you see, what I thought was when we get that all set up, then I'll work out how to do the plug in, isn't it? Right, well, we've put the original clips on. The cam box is back on. John's got it firing on number one. Now we've got to sort out connecting up the distributor. And that's it really, won't be long now, we'll have it running. Get a filter. These taps here get all linked together with a link. And when you pull it, it lets the compression out there and it makes it easier to turn over and I thought it would be absolutely essential but as it happens we never use them because the starter motor whizzes it over no trouble at all but it is quite useful you know the battery's a bit flat you open them and it and it starts no problem with them down but it's sort of half compression on the original Paul and Scott aeroplane engine the water pipe comes out the back of here and you see lots of cars with it modified there's a bloody great pipe runs along here it doesn't look very good so I managed to make this up and we sneaked it in just there and closed it off at the back and then we moved where the pump sends it into the engine from here so in other words it used to send it in there and it used to go around and come back like that now we move this along from here, so now it goes in the back, goes along like that and comes out the front. And it suits being on a car much nicer because you have a couple of nice pipes just there. And not only that, with my ignition setup, which is here, having that pipe coming out of there would have been a very difficult thing. So that's a bit of a mod we made to make this engine more like a car engine than an aeroplane engine. Well, this is it. We're about to start it. We're just... Um, we're just connecting up the half compression just in case we've got too much compression. I'm going to give all the valve guys a bit of a squirt. 
just to make absolutely sure that they're got a bit of lubrication to start with. And that's it really. Right, so it's a bit of a jiggle getting it in the car, putting the flywheel on and nonsense like that. But anyway, we've got it all together. The engine's in the car, and um, we put the barrels on them. Quite funny, really, because we've got a ring compressor kit that we never use because it's always got the wrong size. And needless to say, it was the wrong size for the Hall and Scott. But John welded a little bit in, and it worked like a charm. The barrels fell on, so that was good. And we glued them down with um, Tiger Seal. So I'm hoping that, you know, when they're tightened down, they're not going to leak, because they did leak quite badly. Um, and that's it, really. The, the whole thing's gone together. And uh, we've got it running, as you can see. 
But we're not happy with the distributor. We've always had a problem with that because the, the actual distributor caps leak. And, they, um, and they've got a funny system where instead of the spark jumping, it has a little ring that rubs on the inside of the, inside of the cap. And the minute that gets a bit dirty, it affects it. And I've cleaned them loads of times. So we've now decided that as the caps leak anyway, and the spark jumps across to the various bits and pieces, that I sort for all the old junk. So I've got a box of distributor caps. We got them out, and we found the only one that looked like we could modify was off a of Ford, which is lovely. So we've ordered a new, we've had one, and we just ordered another one. Um, and we found some um, rotor arms, we've got loads of rotor arms, we sorted through them and we decided upon a full rotor arm. So it's going to be a bit of a jiggly job, but I think when we do it, it could improve the spark immensely. So we'll probably do a little bit all about that. I've also had the carburetors completely to pieces. And when we fit the two carburetors, we made new chokes. And I think we were a little bit ambitious because it's never really run slowly nicely. So we have ordered the chokes and made them slightly smaller. So we'll see, we'll see when we drive it on the road. I've entered for Montelleri with the Hall and Scott. How I'm going to get it abroad, I don't know. Because people are talking about carnets and all sorts of things, I don't know. But anyway, I'm sure when it gets nearer, we'll sort that out. Hopefully we'll be now we've got it running, we'll do the distributor caps and then we'll get it out. By then, you know, the weather's looking pretty good. It's cold, but it's not raining. I will give it a good drive and you can see how it goes and we can see how the clutch works. Hopefully it'll be able to go off with the wheel spinning. I never was happy with that clutch, but we'll see. Um, anyway, don't forget to subscribe and uh, hope you all have a good new year. and. Um, Let's look to the future and hope we can go racing next year.